a passerby had reported that he had saw a body in a ditch along Highway 3160 in St. Charles Parish. It was a very remote location, very dark and secluded, and there were no signs of any foul play, no obvious signs of any blunt force trauma to the body, but a suspicious death because of the location and his positioning in the water. He had an identification card in his wallet. So we were able to identify him as David Mitchell. The cause of death was found to be drowning because he had obvious water in his lungs. But I don't think the detectives really said, no, this is just an accident and moved on. The manner of death was left undetermined because we could not figure out why he ended up there. That road is not a commonly traveled road. Something just didn't seem right. Once Ronald comes out as gay, he really works at becoming part of that community. And one of the things that he does is he starts to perform at local drag shows. So you can imagine from Ronald's perspective that this is his opportunity to really, you know, shine. He was dressing half as a woman, half as a man to sing and that they booed him off the stage many times because he just couldn't get it. What happens is that once he starts performing drag, he ends up being bullied by the gay community. He's rejected, and this rejection hurts because this is his tribe. But the reality is his performance is lackluster because he doesn't know how to shine. And so this rejection hurts even more because this is a community that he was really seeking acceptance from. And it's just building up. It's there, and it's just building up. Your mind is building up. Well, he's making it worse. And things happen. Something's going to one day set it off. In 1996, Ronald meets a gentleman walking on a secluded road. He gets the young gentleman to come back to his trailer to smoke some weed and have some fun. He just picked him up hitchhiking. He just talked him into it. They arrest Ronald for sexual assault. While he's jailed, he is raped and brutalized that it ends him in the hospital. He brought that up at every meeting we had. He brought that up. Ronald only spends three months in jail because the victim could not be located, and so the charges were dropped. I think the incident in jail when he's raped, that's the event he expressed most. So that's a turning point for Ronald. It's the worst thing ever happened to him. He's physically debilitated, and so something in his mind just, just snaps. David Mitchell needed a ride back into town. He might often, you know, hitchhike or get rides from other people. Oh, uh, he's got a long way to go. It's dark, there's not many street lights. Uh, it's, it's not a great place to walk. Ronald sees a young man alone walking at night, uh, and this is the perfect opportunity. And so here's this little 
little chubby white guy. So, hey, man, you want a ride? He started asking me if he could make a few dollars, and he said anything would help. These guys, all they want is money. So I, I brought him to the RV. Once David got into Ronald's truck, he lured him to his trailer by offering money. For a 19-year-old who lives in poor Louisiana, any opportunity to make money is something that, you know, they're not going to pass by. After we fooled around, he started telling me, I need more money than that. I told him, I don't have no more money. And he said, either you come up with it or I'm going to the police. I, I was scared that they wouldn't believe my story and they'd bring me to jail. He can't stand going back to jail because he thinks of being raped. He was so traumatized by the experience of being in jail that he was unwilling to leave a victim alive. I got so scared I started choking him. I choked him with an extension cord. He's got that individual's life literally in his hands. So it really is about power and control. The next thing I know, he wasn't breathing. That's where it becomes unbearable. In the slightest provocation, he just strangled him. I put his clothes on, and, and I drove off. And I, I just drove and drove. And all I remember is streets and, and lights. I, I ran around the car, and I pull, pulled him out of the passenger side. I, I hurry up, and I grabbed him, pushed him in the ditch, and then, and then took off. I just want to get out of, out of town and go home and just forget about everything. This is the beginning of a pattern that escalates from here. Ronald Dominique is developing a template to use where he can lure men back to his house and gain control of them. It was a relief. We didn't have to see another face on the wall that we didn't have to talk to any more family members and informing them that you know a loved one was found dead. With Ronald Dominique, his past life experiences of being demeaned, of being cast aside by society, really played a heavy role and how he made sure that he was controlling his victims. And for someone who was powerless, this is the one act that would actually give them the power that they so desperately seeked in their life. 